button. Okay. So I am going to talk about, I'm Cindy Chickalese, and I am going to talk about transitioning an existing wiki to incorporate structured data. So in Cindy's ideal world, you are creating a new enterprise wiki. And in an ideal situation, you start with an empty wiki and you have what Lex talked about earlier, what, which you start identifying what the key abstractions are, the key entities in your problem domain that you want to represent within your wiki. And so you identify them and you identify attributes of, of these abstractions and you organize them into, and I'll say classes, it's sort of like an object-oriented abstraction, right? Where you talk about the classes, the main, the key abstractions and the attributes of them and you design templates and forms and um, either semantic media wiki properties or cargo fields to represent them, categories, maybe a namespace. And, and why do you do this? You know, because it promotes contribution, it increases findability in your wiki, it reduces the need for manual curation of the um, content in your wiki, and it becomes more scalable. So that's Cindy's ideal world. You start out from scratch. But what happens if there's an, a wiki that's already been created by somebody and you're asked to, to come in and help them add structured data, data to an existing corpus of information. And so I'm going to um, give you an example of a situation where um, this may be happening. Um, so actually, um, I can credit Ike for putting me in touch with uh, some folks at the um, Folger Shakespeare Library. And they said, um, can you come and give us a crash course in Semantic Media Wiki, which is going to be later this month, because they have this um, wiki called the Lost Plays Database, which has information about plays that have been lost. They have information from a variety of sources saying that these plays existed at one point. But um, to the best of my understanding of this wiki, what this is is a category, a catalog of hundreds of these lost plays with information about where they were identified. And um, th it's a beautiful collection, it really is. All completely flat, unstructured, um, as from the perspective of structured data um, information in this wiki. Um, here's an example of a play page from the Lost Plays database. And you can see at the top there's a title, there's a line that has an identify, um, identifies the dramatists, the playwrights of this, um, this work, and in parentheses at the end, the year at which they believe it was created. And then through the table of contents, you can see there's a bunch of sections, and they were very careful. It's really a beautifully curated piece of work. Um, each of the play's pages has a section for the historical records, the theatrical provenance, probable genres, possible narrative and dramatic sources or analogs, references to the play, critical commentary for what it's worth, and works cited. So very organized, but all just flat wiki text to create this. Um, here's an example of the wiki text. I, I don't know whether you can, I hope you can read that from back there. But if you look at the top, you can see there's a link to the Thomas Haywood page, the John Webster page, the Henry Chettle page, and the Thomas Decker page. So that part is the dramatists. And then following in parentheses is a link to the page 1602, which is a page with all of the plays that were um, believed to have been created that have been lost in 1602 that are being um, curated here. And then there's um, you can see the second level heading historical records. So you can see this is all just pure wiki text. So it's not stored as structured data, so it's not queryable. Um, the, Thomas Decker was one of the dramatists for um, that play. And so you can hear, see here a list of 
all of the plays, and this is a hand curated tab wiki text table listing all of the lost plays that he's believed to be the dramatist for. And you can see down here, Christmas comes but once a year. Um, so, and then this is the wiki text, and you can see it is a hand curated wiki text table. Now, one of the things, if you go back, you notice that there are some red links there. And that's something I'll talk about later if I have time. But what's interesting here is they have the possibility here, because they're hand curating the table, to add rows that, for data that does not yet exist, which you'll see that once we query the data, we're going to temporarily lose that ability. OK, so this is a somewhat busy slide. But if this part up here in the corner is the top of the left sidebar from their wiki, and you can see that there are some links to browse the wiki by year, by play title, by dramatist, by auspices. And all of this link leads you to these pages that are hand curated tables of information. Again, beautifully, carefully done. Um, here, Play Titles A, if you click up here on Play Titles, you'll get this page that's got 24 links up there because they combine X, Y, and Z. Um, each alphabet letter has a cur hand curated table of the plays starting with that letter in the alphabet. Okay. Um, over here, years, it's got a page that lists by decade all of the years, and each one of those years is then linked to a page that has the plays that were um, believed to have been authored in that year. And here's the wiki text just to show you it is all meticulously and carefully hand curated information. So how do you transform a wiki that's like that to one that incorporates structured data? And so I'm just going to go through a quick case study just looking at that top line of each of the plays that has the list of the dramatist and the year. And um, so the first thing you're going to do is decide upon your data model, which is going to be very similar to the process that you would do if you were starting from an empty wiki. Okay, but here you have the advantage of already seeing some structure. And in this case, incredibly fortunate at how careful they were in constructing each one of those pages. Often we are not as lucky. Often if we're trying to transform an existing wiki, we start from something that might be a massive unstructured data and it's much harder to derive this data model. But it turns out here we're actually quite fortunate. Make a backup of your wiki. <laughs> Okay, before you start mucking around with it, make a copy. Um, then create the templates, the forms, if you're using semantic media wiki, the properties, maybe namespaces, um, if you want to have different namespaces for the different concepts. Um, create categories if they do not exist. Once you've got all that structure in your, your wiki, make a backup of your wiki and transform your content. This could be done manually if your wiki is small enough. In this case, there's 400 odd plays in the database. Um, and it would be a lot faster if one could just transform it um, in an automated fashion. Python generally wa works well if you automate the process. Um, back when I was at MITRE, um, I inherited a Python script. I'd never written in Python before, but I inherited a Python script that was run every night on um, one of our wikis that um, extracted some information from the pages, went out and did some web queries, and went back and rewrote the pages. That was a great script, because all I did was cannibalize it every time I needed to use, do something else automated to a wiki. Um, unfortunately, I left that script behind when I left MITRE. And so when I was going to look at this process, I decided to look and see what else there was. And maybe I'd actually have to go learn Python myself. It turns out I didn't have to, because um, because, oh, well, I, my punchline's a little bit later on. There's this thing called, unless it's, it possibly might be underneath that strip at the bottom there. Um, there's a thing called PyWikiBot, which is um, a um, tool that you can use to write some Python that will manipulate your wiki. And um, it's fabulous. And it may still require some manual intervention. You'll see, as well structured as this data is, it's not perfectly structured. So there's still some um, manual intervention required. So here's the structured data model that I extracted 
from the existing wiki. And you can see you've got a play that's got a title, a dramatist, a year, auspices, um, and then all of these um, second level headings. Um, the dramatist points to a bunch of other um, pages, a page for each dramatist. Um, the year points to a year page. And then th there, there's this auspices information, but um, what I found was the auspices, which was really sort of where, where this play, um, I believe that refers to um, in which um, document it was identified as being um, existing. Um, that's not in, a, in a, a single easily extracted place. It's sort of more in the commentary down here. So um, I didn't mess around with auspices, which is why it's that little dotted line there. But that's something that you, know, you would want to find a way to link from the play pages to the auspices pages. But I focused on the play, the dramatist, and the year. Um, so, for example, we saw that first line in the play, Christmas comes but once a year, and we saw that it looks like this, and what we want to do is translate, trans, translate that into a template call, to a template called play, where we have uh, template parameters, Thomas Haywood, John Webster, and Harry Chettle, Thomas Decker. Um, those of you who have worked with templates before will immediately identify the problem there, which is what happens if you have a uh, dramatist who happens to have a comma in his name. Um, we're deferring that problem for later. <laughs> and then the year that it was um, authored. So PyWikiBot is a Python library and collection of tools that automate media wiki sites, originally designed for Wikipedia, it's used through other Wikimedia projects and other, many media wiki wikis. And it turned out to be extremely easy to learn how to install it, and I've got some links here that I will show you. Um, so the first thing you do is install wiki, install PyWikiBot, and I've got a link there, you can refer to my slides later if you want to do this yourself. You need to add a bot password to your wiki account. So this runs as a bot. And so what you do is um, you have an existing account on the wiki. You go to the special bot passwords play page. You create a bot password for your account. So a, a, a password-based login to your account that a bot can use. and then um, generate some config files that um, link your account to the bot account or the bot identifier and the password, the bot password. And then you create your own script. So all of that stuff is linked here um, from when I did this myself a couple weeks ago. So this is an example of your user config. You need to identify, you know, give, the, give a name to your wiki. In this case, it's LPD for Lost Plays Database. Um, you say the username under which the bot is going to access your wiki, and you identify the password file, and in the password file you link your user account to the name of the bot that you've given access and the bot password. And then there's a, a family file for your wiki that identifies the domain name of your wiki and the path to um, in the URL because it's going to use the API.php. It's going to use the action API to get information from your wiki. This is my, well, not quite the entire script. I yada yada over the regular expressions here, but right here it, there's just some Python-based regular expressions that transform that single first line of code, which is comma-separated list of dramatists, and then parentheses a date. So here's the main part of the program, and you can see how simple it is, how much work it does for you. So in, in the case of the Lost Plays database, all of the plays are in a category called all. So it looks for all of it, so it identifies a category, um, it will identifies the category all as a structure in the in the code, and then it generates, it creates a page generator based on that category, which will allow you to loop for page and generator, so for every page generated by that category-based page generator, loop over every page in the wiki. And it's going to call this function transform, which I, yeah, that thing over there that does lots of 
ugly regular expressions to break apart that first line. It's really only about 30 lines of code, but they're not pretty. Um, and then, so this is how easy it is. All you do is then set page.txt, so page is the thing that you're generating in your for loop. Um, you set it to whatever you want. So here's the template that's returned from that transform thing. And then lines one is everything else. So I split the page into the first line and then everything else on that page. So I just add everything else back in. And then I do a page.save. Boom. OK? You've just transformed your entire wiki. So up here, I've got some statistics. So that in total, there are 458 pages in that category all. And of them, I was able to transform 246. This transform does some really sort of brute force stuff with the regular expressions. And if it can't match that line to an expected comma separated list of dramatists followed by some white space followed by a four digit year in parentheses, it punts. So I was able to at least transform more than half of the pages in the wiki um, using this little Python script. It took 40 minutes to run, and the reason it took so long is that I believe it's that page.save command. It pauses for 10 seconds after every save so that you don't overwhelm your wiki. And so it would have taken, I guess that would be one-tenth of that, um, so four minutes to run through the entire um, well, to run through that 458 pages of the wiki. So this is what the play looked like before, and it turns out that's what the page play looks like after. <laughs> um, this is the wiki text for what the page play looked like before, and this is what the wiki text looked like for the play after. It just transformed. So, okay, so that's the transformation of the play pages. So then what you need is you need to have the um, templates behind that to support it. So here, and I'm going to show you this all in Semantic Media Wiki and in Cargo. So this is also your little how similar, you know, how you can do exactly the same thing in Semantic Media Wiki and Cargo. You're welcome, Yaron. Um, <laughs> so this is the play template in Semantic Media Wiki, include only. It wraps it include only. Um, we use a ray map, which is actually a function that comes out of page forms. This is actually the only part of page forms you're going to see in this presentation because I'm already going to run out of time, I can tell. And um, um, that just is a very nice way to um, break that comma separated list of dramatists into bits and then put them in square brackets so it's generating links from the names of the dramatists. Um, then I, this is a pattern of, that I do quite often, div style equals display none. I put them that around all of the um, working part of my template. So I separate the presentation of my template from the business part, business logic of my template, and so that I don't have to put everything onto one line so that page spaces don't get generated in my, out, in my um, pages, I put that all in a display none. So I set the title to the page name. I again use a ray map to break the dramatists apart and use set dramatist equal. I set the year equal and I put it in category plays. Um, and if I, if I do that and then do a browse properties for the Christmas comes but once a year play, you can see that it's broken the dramatist out into these linkable properties to the pages. You will notice that it's last name, comma, first name, and that's because they actually have redirects from all of the dramatist names from the ones with the first name first to one with last name, comma, first name. And because of um, because of the redirect and because of the display title extension, um, those show as the linked page. Um, okay. This is the cargo version, which is just a couple lines longer because you've got your cargo declare at first, which is um, in no include block, which declares um, what the data structure looks like. And then in your include only block, you've got, again, that same array map. And then you've got your um, business portion where you're actually using a cargo store to store the information 
in your page. And that's it, it looks the same. Otherwise, or it's the same kind of structure. And here, if you use a page, if you go to page values for that page after having applied that cargo template, you'll see the same thing. You've got your dramatists and you've got your year. So here's where things get really cool. Um, so you remember before we had this play titles A, where for every letter of the alphabet, except for the last three which were combined together, we had a separate page with a curated table of the plays that started with that letter. And so you had 24 different pages that all had to be curated, curated manually. This is the new um, play titles page. And this is a single page that if you look at the style of the URL up top, you'll notice the t page is called play titles and then there's the question mark to pass in a URL parameter. And I'm passing in a URL parameter letter, and in this case, it's the letter C, because I want to see all of the plays that start with the letter C. And um, somewhere down here, oh, it's below the fold, is Christmas comes but once a year. And this is the entire code for um, the query. So all of those hand curate 24 pages of hand curated wiki text can be replaced by this, and unfortunately the last two lines down here are hidden, I'll tell you what they are in a sec. Um, but this generates the, the entire table that's linked by the first letter of um, the name. So we're using, um, there's a um, extension called URL get parameters that allows you to from wiki text get whatever the parameters are all, that are passed in on the URL. So in this case we use URL get and we get the letter parameter. Um, we use URL decode to decode it because it's been encoded so things like equal signs and question marks and pluses are um, decoded, are encoded. We then use the variables extension to define a variable which we call letter to store that so that we can use that letter later on in our template or in our page, in our query. So then um, I print this, I use an array print, this is using the arrays extension and I, so I've defined an array with all the letters of the alphabet in it and then I use array print to just um, print out that bar of the letters separated by the vertical bars. Um, that vertical bar is ampersand number sign X7C um, semicolon. Anybody know why I put that there rather than actually putting a vertical bar? Because <laughs> the vertical bar is a separator and so that would totally confuse the array print. So <laughs> you have to fake it out by using the HTML code. And then I do uh, semantic media wiki ask. This is the SMW version. I'll show you the cargo version in a sec. And it asks for all of the all of the things that are in category plays um, with the title that st starts with, what's like that variable letter, and it defaults to A if the variable hasn't been set. So if you happen to come to this page and you don't provide that URL parameter, it's going to default to A. And then it prints out the year, the dramatist, and it uses a the template format. And there are some auxiliary templates, either has, uh, each of them has three or four lines to print out the header of the table and then to format each row of the table. Okay, this is the cargo version. Everything's the same except for this part down here which is the cargo query. Oh, that part at the bottom was just the limit, um, how, just a limit command to limit the number of um, re um, rows that were returned. So you can see it's very similar to the Semantic Media Wiki version. Um, this is just to show you that um, how to generate in each. So in that um, row of letters at the top, you want to be able to click on each one of those and have it go to the current page with the letter being set to whatever letter you happen to click on. So that letter is going to be passed in as a parameter. And here it goes ahead and there's where it does the URL encode to encode what was put in. The third parameter there is the letter. 
and you're passing in actually the current page name so that it can get to the current page. And those are the formatting. And the only thing that differs between Semantic Media Wiki Cargo here is that we needed square brackets for the cargo version. Okay, so just some other things to consider. This is my last slide. Um, in doing this, again, I said I, did, I didn't do the page forms part, there just wasn't time. But the next obvious thing you would want to do is then create a form that would allow you to easily edit the plays. Um, namespaces, I used to use this pattern where wh every one of these first class entities that I created, I would put in a separate namespace. So I'd have a play namespace and a dramatist namespace and a year namespace. Um, recently I found that that's not really necessary. So um, I'm not doing that as much as I used to. Content-free page naming is what we used to call it when I was at MITRE, the, um, using display titles. Um, all of these plays currently have the name of the play or the name of the dramatist, and that gets a little bit hairy for things like when you've got commas embedded in the name. It makes it hard to query. If somebody happens to enter something with a typo it, and you want to change the name, it, you have to move it and you wind up with, wind up with redirects and it's messy. Um, so ideally, what I would like to do is also, if I were doing one of these, transform it by taking all of the pages and add the current title of the page as an attribute of, that you, or as a field that you would pass into the template and give them all just numerical um, page titles that don't actually have any of the content in the page title. Um, how to handle dramatists with commas in their names. Um, Date ranges and questionable dates is part of the reason that some of those pages, uh, you know, I was only able to translate half of them automatically was that some of them had a range of dates over which they um, were believed to have been written. And so you just have to make sure that you can account for something like that. Um, and then the how to handle the th the, those red linked pages. Um, what I would probably do is parse those tables that have the red linked um, pointers to plays and create dummy pages with them that are marked by having some Boolean or something, some, some property that say, says they're incomplete. And then you could actually have them still even render as being in red or being highlighted in some way in the table because you'd want the readers of the wiki or the curators of the wiki still be able to easily find the pages that don't have real content in there. They're placeholders. And so you'd want to have them in there so that you know that they um, exist but that they don't actually, aren't, aren't yet populated by um, real information. And that's it. Questions? Uh, Cindy. I understand that the PyBot um, query is the wiki directly and then transform the wiki text and writes it directly back to the wiki. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, because what I recommend, and I'd like to uh, know your opinion on that, what I do usually, I export everything into a Git repository. So you can check the transformation, you can commit, you can reapply, you can even use external tools, bash tools to uh, do that. And especially what's really important is it's robust and reversible. Yep. Because uh, the first time I did it, um, I had a mistake, and it took me a night uh, to figure out where the mess was. So I, I what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I agree completely that that is the, the right, the correct way to do it. Um, mine maybe could be viewed as the lazy or the really in a hurry way to do it. Um, that takes a little bit more work, setting up an external repository, um, exporting, figuring out how you want to manipulate it. I agree, if you've got the time, the energy, and, and also that's more long term, you know, for future transformations, or if you find something that you didn't do, you have that external repository you can continue to, um, to work with. So that, that is definitely a good way to go. 
Uh, I tend to do this way because I tend to be lazy and want to get done fast. But does PyBot uh, provide the functionality to manage external repositories for that purpose? Well, it's a, it's a general Python scripting framework. So yeah, you know, you don't have to read the page and then write it back to the wiki. You could read the page and then write it to an external repository. And then you could write a separate PyWikiPot script that would read from your external repository and write to the wiki. So absolutely, you could still do that with PyWikiPot. It's just an additional step. Um, I think I, I just wanted to follow up here and, and say what Lex should have said, which is take the time to go fast. Take the time to go fast. <laughs> that is one of Lex's key phrases. This is true. Sydney, I think you said that uh, initially you had namespaced the properties separately. Um, and we've been dis having discussions a lot about our namespaces. Generally, we, if we have a large database, we'll namespace it just to keep it out of the search results. So what were the considerations you uh, decided not to namespace them? So um, that's an interesting thought to keep it out of the search results. Typically, the types of things, like as I said, it, the old Cindy would have created a namespace for plays, a namespace for dramatists, a namespace for years and a namespace for auspices, and I'm not sure, then I guess, I think those are the key abstractions there. You'd want those things to be searchable, so, you, so I wouldn't do it in that case, in this, in this case, to keep things out of the search results. Um, I did that so I could do, you know, for example, special all pages, and then just go and see a list of the things that were just in that namespace, um, and it was very easy to go through and, you know, sort of do cross-checking and whatever. Um, but it occurred to me that I always assigned a namespace and a category as a pair. And you can always just go and look at the category and see a listing of the pages that are in that category. The one thing I might continue to do, however, is to differentiate between the main namespace where I typically put my query pages. So things like that query to give you all of the um, plays by the first letter. Um, I might still want to keep the queries in one namespace so you can look at your set of query pages easily because those, you can always put those in a category too, but you don't always tend to do so. Um, and then keep your content pages separate. Um, I'm curious about why you would want to keep things out of the search results though. Uh, so typically, the databases we're, we're talking about are things like specific error messages or uh, potentially like look up uh, and we're, yeah, we, we don't want to keep them out of all search results, but what I, what I meant was out of the, just the default search results. Okay. Um, so if you're searching for a component, for example, a user just wants to see the content pages that are going to explain that component and typically you don't want to, you know, clobber those search results with all these other error messages and other external databases. But they can always go in and check that namespace to search that. And just search that namespace. Yeah, we tended to not necessarily find things as much by search as opposed to, like, you search everything or you browse by namespace. But that's definitely a valid use case, and it really depends upon the um, wiki that you're building and, and what your use cases are for right. it. So as your local Python guy, if anybody wants to learn Python or teach their kids Python, I have an Adafruit product, it's a little microcontroller thing, product 3333, that is the funnest way to learn programming. So it's got little lights, blinks, and you learn Python easily. Cool. Come talk to me. <laughs> So the, it's uh, Adafruit is the name of the company. It's called the Circuit Playground Express, or CPX. It runs Circuit Python, and it's product 3333. Very cool. $25. Good deal. Everybody's going to order one over lunch. Yep. Yeah, I just wanted to throw out that some of the red links are actually on pages. So if it's on like a year page, so then that's actually data that has to be retained in the stub page that's being created. And it might be in multiple pages. I'm not sure how the, oh, how and the yes. red leaks are set up. So that's, yeah, that's a good point. <coughs> so some of those red laked manually curated rows in those tables, th that row will appear in several different tables because it was a, the, on the year, 
um, on the play title, on the dramatist, and there is always a potential that the information may not agree across all of those different tables where those red linked things are because, well, and that's actually, so if that's the case for non-red linked, um, there's no reason that to assume that there couldn't be a error or a lack of agreement for the other ones, but we're using the information that's actually on the page as that authoritative source of information for that play. But if we don't have a play page, we don't know. And so what if one thing says, you know, 1571 and another one says 1572, how do you, um, so that would be something that would be part of the, you'd have to. And, and what I did previously for, um, when I went through this process for other wikis also is dump an error file, an exception file, and so that you can go back and by hand look at things that don't match. You know, and often I would just write, run Python scripts that would do sort of data consistency checks and print out information. And so you could fix things in the wiki before you'd run the transformation script. Um, I have a question. <clears throat> are, you, are you burying the lead here that you're now a MediaWiki consultant? No. <laughs> I'm just doing this because it's fun and to keep me honest. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I don't, get to, I don't get to program enough anymore, so um, I take every opportunity I can. So this was really just a fun project for me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, and it's lunchtime.